Today, let's start learning our chapter one. Are you all excited? Yes. How many of you use internet? Most of us use it, right? Either to play games or watch movies or to browse for some information. But children, do you know what are the basic rules you need to remember while using it? No, most of us will not know it. Also, do you know what are the crimes that are happening in the world of internet? No. Come, now let's understand in our subject, what's the name of our subject? Please tell me, what's the name of our subject? Our subject is ICT, which stands for Information and Communication Technology. And our first chapter for today is Computer Ethics, Crime, Security Threats and Measures. Let's see what are the major topics that we are going to see. Basically, in this chapter, we are going to learn about Computer Ethics, which is the rules that we need to follow while we go online. And what are all the various computer crimes committed? And finally, the computer security threats. And what are all the measures to prevent or avoid these threats? So children, now let me quickly brief you about computer ethics. Ethics means rules and beliefs. All of us as an individual must follow some ethics. For example, assume you're all walking on a road. As a pedestrian, what are we supposed to do to cross a road? We are supposed to first watch for the signal, especially the pedestrian signal. And when it is green, we are supposed to cross in the zebra crossing only. Similarly, while we are using our computer, especially when we go online, we are supposed to follow some rules and regulations. Rules state what is right and what is wrong. As a child, you should be aware of the moral to develop a good sense of social responsibility. Some people are violating these rules for money or sometimes for fun. But is it good? No. Now, let's understand about few cyber ethics. First one, stay safe online. Again, I repeat, stay safe online. Internet users hand over personal information in order to sign up or register for services without even realizing that they are potentially setting themselves up for an invasion of privacy. When you are online, only use the websites which is really useful to you. Second, stay kind online. Again, I repeat, stay kind online. Before typing a message or a response to someone, think about how you would react if they are sitting in front of you. Make sure you treat the people with the same respect as you treat them when they are in front of you. Third one, don't plagiarize. Again, I repeat, don't plagiarize. Plagiarism is an act of copying and publishing another person's content without proper citation. It's like stealing someone else's work and releasing it as your own work. Is it right, children? No, not at all. We are all responsible individual. We should be able to publish our own thoughts and contents only. Fourth one, don't share information. Fourth one, don't share information. Kindly don't share any of your personal information like your photo, account details in any of the social media. Let it be your email, or let it be either Facebook, in any of the social media, please don't share any of your personal information. This is your fourth rule. Now comes your fifth rule. Be appropriate. If you see an inappropriate
inappropriate behavior, especially in the social media, kindly come out of it or just give them some kind of warnings to stop it. The better way is to have a proper behavior when you are using the social media. So fifth point was be appropriate. Now comes point number six. The sixth rule is use reliable sources only. Use only the well-known, popular and the recommended resources whenever you go online and browse for some kind of information because that will prevent your system from the virus attacks. Correct. Now, what are the six rules? Stay safe online, stay kind online, don't plagiarize, don't share information, be appropriate, use reliable sources. Children, now we have understood about the computer ethics. Now, let's understand about the intellectual property rights. Property is something you own. We have right over our property protected by law. The same way ideas and thoughts produced by our mind are also protected by law. Are you all puzzled? Yes, my dear children. Intellectual property rights are the right given to the persons over the creations of their mind. They usually give the creator an exclusive right over the use of his or her creation for a certain period of time. It is illegal to use the creations without the permission of the owner or the producer. These rights are usually related to literacy, artistic works, inventions and discoveries, and etc. Understood, my dear children? We have discussed about the intellectual property rights. Next, one part of the intellectual property right is your copyright. Most of us have seen it when you are using some series. Copyright, the symbol C, surrounded by a circle and which says all rights are reserved. So copyright is a form of intellectual property right that says all the rights are reserved. It is unlawful and unethical to use them without the permission of the owner. In case if some material or information is downloaded and used, you must acknowledge it sincerely to the author. This is also called as referencing. I repeat, in case if the copyrighted material or the information is downloaded and used, you must acknowledge the author sincerely and this process is called referencing. Now, let's understand what happens if this intellectual property rights and copyright laws are not followed properly. So that comes into play the software piracy. I repeat the word software piracy. What is piracy? Piracy is an act of robbery or criminal violence. So what is software piracy? Software piracy is the illegal reproduction and distribution of the software applications. Children, you remember the original copyrighted versions of the softwares are sometimes available at a cheaper rate at the market. For example, you go and you wanted to install a virtual version of Windows. The actual price of it would be around 4,000 or 5,000. But that particular same CD is available to you at a very cheaper cost. Have you ever wondered why is it so? That is because there are few people who make an illegal reproduction and distribution of the copyrighted softwares. This process is called as software piracy. What is the impact of the software piracy? The software piracy has a significant impact on the economy. It leads to the job losses and the revenue loss to the software companies. Now, let's understand what are the various types of software privacy. First one, 
end user piracy. I repeat, end user piracy. All the softwares, as I told you, are licensed one. If the user or the creator creates a copies without proper license, we call it as the end user piracy. So the first type is end user piracy. Now comes the second type, which is your internet piracy. Unauthorized copies downloaded over the internet are called as internet piracy. I repeat, unauthorized copies downloaded over internet are called as internet piracy. The second type was internet piracy. Now moving on to the third type, which is pre-installed software piracy. When the manufacturer of the software installs one copy of the software and legally installs it in the multiple computer, then we call it as pre-installed software piracy. Again, I repeat, when the manufacturer of the software installs one copy of the software and illegally installs it in multiple computer, we call it as pre-installed software piracy. So this is the third type of software piracy. Now moving on to the fourth type, which is counterfeiting. People make duplicate copies of the original CD and sell it at a very lower price. We call this as counterfeiting. This kind of software piracy is most commonly found. For example, we are getting the movie series right in the market for a very cheaper rate. That process can also be referred to as your counterfeiting. Next comes your fifth type, which is online auction piracy. Again, I repeat, online auction piracy. This is selling a software which are never authorized for the resale. I repeat, this is selling a software which is never authorized for the resale of the third party. That is, the manufacturer of the software has not given the rights for a third party to sell the software. But when that happens, we call it as an online auction piracy. Now you may wonder, why is that I should not use pirated softwares? The same software which is given by the manufacturer is available for a cheaper rate. But why am I not supposed to use it? Because the pirated softwares normally has two major disadvantages. One is no warranty protection. If in case your software crashes or if it is, so when you are using an operating system and this operating system crashes, there is not going to be any kind of warranty protection, which is not advisable. Second thing, these pirated softwares may contain virus. Computer virus, as all of us know, is going to affect the health of your computer. So it's always not advisable to go for a pirated software, even though the pirated software is available for the cheaper rate. So as an individual, it's our responsibility to choose which particular software is suitable for our computer and use only the authorized and the licensed version of it. Now, let's move on to the next topic, which is privacy. I repeat, privacy. We all require privacy. Yes or no, children? Whenever I'm sitting in a room, I don't want any one of me, any one of my friend or my family member to disturb me. I require privacy there. So privacy is an important aspect of life. It is unethical to infringe the privacy of other people without the concern or permission of the person. So how to understand this? My friend is working on a computer. He is entering his user ID and a password. Is it good to just see what is his password and use the system if it is left open? No, not at all. Always we need to maintain the privacy of the other data, other person's data and our data also. Thank you. So moving on to the next is your cyber crime. What does a cyber crime mean? The cyber crime means criminal offense. It involves the use of the communication 
or information systems, including any device over the internet for just stealing the information or committing some kind of illegal actions. This crime can also be referred to as e-crime or high-tech crime. So in the cyber crime, the two main words which we need to understand are about crackers and the hackers. Crackers, the one who is able to just break the security of your system is called as the crackers. Hackers, on the other hand, are the people who will be able to get an unauthorized access to your device. Okay, so we need to understand about crackers and the hackers. They both are the major persons who are involved in the cyber crime. Also, there are various other examples of cyber crime, like cyber terrorism, which means blackmailing a business or a person. Cyber bullying, just harassing someone online can be called as cyberbullying. Please find the other examples of cybercrime. In today's class, we have learned about computer ethics, software piracy,